If you thought the recent Senate hearings into steroid use by athletes was ridiculous, as Al Jolson used to say, you ain't heard nothing yet. Back in the 1950s, Congress held televised hearings into the corrupting influence of comic books, and the hysteria led to public book burnings, blacklists, and ruined careers. Author David Haydu has written a compelling book on this topic, titled The Ten Cent Plague, The Great Comic Book Scare, and How It Changed America. First of all, welcome to Backstage. I'm happy to be here, Tim. Now, I'd like you to set the stage about how popular were the comic books before the scare started, and what kind of comic books were out there? Well, before the scare, the early comic books were very much like the comic books of today. When we think of comic books, we think of superhero comics and noble story stories of heroes doing good, fighting crime, Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman. But what happened after a few years, in around the mid-1940s, is that the age of the comic book readership increased. Comic book readers grew older. And a whole new kind of comic was developed to appeal to older readers. And they were more sophisticated. They were darker, they were focused more on crime than on crime fighting, and also centered on, on horror and lust, and they got darker and darker and darker until trouble ensued. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, let's get specific. What were some of the comic books that were the mm. worst ones out there in the minds of these people who were so hysterical about them? Mm, that's a good question. They weren't, as I said, the Batman and Superman comics that we think of. They were comics focused on, on crime, like uh, uh, crime does not pay. And of course the cover would say, crime does not pay, <laughs> like mm -hmm. this. Or crime suspense comics that was published by a company called EC that uh, did many of the most lurid and most serious and most artful and, and ambitious, but many of the most controversial comics. They also published comics focused on horror, like Tales from the Crypt and the Vault of Horror. Which became a television show, Tales of the Crypt. And these right. stories were really gruesome in the artwork as well as right. some of the storytelling, weren't they? They were. They were a, every bit as extreme for those days as the most violent or prurient films that we think of today. If we think of the Saw films or the Hills Have Eyes films or the, or the most scandalous movies being made today that really terrify us as as, as parents that think that young people are seeing this stuff. Comic, comics, these comics were every bit as extreme in their day. And they depicted uh, sadomasochism, uh, 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 murder, mayhem, as well as necrophilia, and all sorts of horrible things. So all bets were off pretty much in the right. subject line. Right. There was no censor censoring body at first. There were, nobody was watching what comic book makers were doing. It's hard to kind of mm -hmm. believe today. There were book burnings, I understand, by the Girl Scouts, of all mm -hmm. things. That's right. You know, in 1953, December 1953, a, c a humor comic that was a spinoff of Mad called Panic was banned in the state of Massachusetts. I mean, banned in Boston is a cliche, but it was banned in the state of Massachusetts. And the New York City Police Department raided the offices of the publishing company of EC Comics. The community groups organized against comics and organized public burnings of comics starting in 1945. And there dozens and dozens of these events took place over a period of 10 years. And kids were led to collect comics from their neighborhoods and they built these vast bonfires. They marched around the bonfires reciting incantations and they made pledges to never read comics again horrifying, horrifying things. Ju in, the first, in the case of the first ones, just a few months after World War II. It seems unbelievable that mm -hmm. such a thing was happening in America. And then also, mm -hmm. we had the McCarthy-era-esque mm -hmm. sort of hearings that right. took place in the Congress. Tell That's me about right. those. Well, we all know about the McCarthy era, and we know what happened in Hollywood. Well, so we know about the Hollywood Ten. And we know that screenwriters and directors were blacklisted and they suffered mightily as a result. But this story of the fear of a kind of cor another corrupting influence, that comic books were a corrupting influence, because they were the most popular form of entertainment in the country, is com very largely unknown. And the country basically went crazy. There were, as I said, public burnings, but also uh, over 100 pieces of legislation all around the country, uh, laws passed in cities and states around the country that made comic books of various kinds illegal. Comic books were outlawed mm -hmm. in Los Angeles, 
uh, in the state of New York, in some cases here in Massachusetts, in Maryland, and dozens of other states, and in dozens upon dozens of municipalities. And the comic book industry, the makers of comic books suffered very, very much like the Hollywood 10. Every kid was reading comics in those days. Delinquents, debutantes, athletes, scholars, to be young in those days was, was to be a comic book reader. Comic books were that influential. Well, I want to thank you. The name of the book is The Ten Cent Plague, The Great Comic Book Scare and How It Changed America. David Haydu, thank you for joining thank us you. on Backstage. Thanks.